Joining me now is Carla Qualtro. She is the Minister of Employment, Workforce Development, and Disability Inclusion. Uh, Minister, great to have you back on the program. And I've got to start with these new benefits. You need legislation to pass these targeted programs. The House doesn't resume until November 22nd. They haven't tabled the legislation yet. The opposition hasn't seen it. Why is the government so confident that you can pass these in time? Well, Evan, we've had a lot of practice at doing this, and we've worked very closely with opposition parties over the past uh, 20 months to make sure Canadians had the benefits. There was no disruption, and we will have the ability to retroactively um, deliver these benefits if there is a week or so of gap. Um, but quite frankly, the Prime Minister is in conversations with opposition leaders. I've actually been um, reaching out to my critics, and, and I think we can do this, and I think we can do this for Canadians, and we intend to. You, you know, it's a bit ironic that your party called an election because of the toxic uh, nature of Parliament, and now you're so confident that in three weeks you can all get it done, which does throw in a question, why the heck we needed the election in the first place? But I've spoken to the NDP, and we're about to speak with the NDP and the Conservatives. They're furious that you didn't extend these programs. They feel that you've abandoned people. They say, we have to examine the legislation, so they, you may not get it done in three weeks, Minister. Yeah, and I, I think it's false to say that we're leaving people high and dry, Evan, because we're really not. We, we're, we're actually responding to a very different economic and public health situation today than there was a year ago um, when we put in place the recovery benefit. So uh, be very clear, the sickness benefit's ongoing, the caregiver benefit's ongoing. Uh, we are going to support workers through this lockdown benefit. So if you can't work, your job isn't available to you because of a lockdown, you'll get the same level of support right. you did under the CRB. Never mind these additional business supports for, right. for businesses more writ large that will help workers. One of the keys is eligibility and definitions. L let's look at the Canada Worker Lockdown Benefit, which replaces the CRB, only for workers impacted by a government-imposed public health lockdown. So is a lockdown a full lockdown? Or is a lockdown you know, limiting capacity at certain businesses who say, we're essentially locked down compared to my neighbor? How does that work? Well, of course, we're, we're going to be working on those details, but um, the, the premise is workers who are un unable to work because of a local lockdown any time between October 24th and, as you said, May 7th, will be eligible to get this $300 a week payment. It will be driven by how a, a province or a region characterizes, of course, the lockdown. If they declare a lockdown, right. um, it, certainly if it's a complete lockdown, uh, what, what you're talking about is a partial lockdown. And right now, I th the thinking is a complete lockdown. The Tourism and Hospitality Recovery Program, again, let's talk about eligibility. What is defined as a tourism business? Who qualifies as a hospitality business, right? Yeah. That, though, what's the criteria there? Because I bet you're going to get bombarded with, I'm in the hospitality business because I have customers. Yeah, absolutely. So what, um, what we've announced so far is that hotels, restaurants, festivals, travel agencies, tour operators, trade shows, um, obviously, those things fall squarely within the, the confines of tourism. Hospitality, as I said, is restaurants. Um, we're looking at, you know, a more solid definition of a qualifying business. Certainly, it's also there's also going to be an option on a case-by-case -case basis. The finance minister was out yesterday saying, yes, of course, trade shows and tour operators and, you know, restaurants. So it's a very big bucket. Yeah, um, it's a and we're just going to have to make sure that around the edges, to your point, we're very clear with businesses as to what what um, what we will allow within and without. Because that's you know that's what we're trying to do with these programs is is clarify as much as possible right. you know what the eligibility criteria are. Well, in the end, Minister, did did you overshoot? Did your government overshoot in trying to move quickly? Uh, and in fact, things like CRB and others. Did they end up suppressing the workforce? And that's why you know lots of businesses are saying we can't find workers. Did you guys end up overshooting in the end? I very strongly believe that we did not. I've been watching religiously the labor force data over the past 20 months, and and I've seen that when there are jobs, people are taking them, even when those jobs paid less than the CERB or the CRB, because people are motivated to work for a, a bunch of reasons, including the the security of knowing you have a job next month when you might not have a benefit next month. And I think that we managed to strike a balance between, you know, the labor shortages were there before, and I've heard these arguments, um, and we now need to recognize that the best way to support businesses is through these more active measures like I described. The other element uh, are vaccines, and there's lots of vaccine mandates. We'll get to the, the, the vaccine passport in a minute. Uh, but if, some, if a worker, we're seeing this in the healthcare sector, people that don't get the shot, if they don't have a medical exemption, they will lose their job. 
they will, they will lose their ability to work. My question to you is, if you don't get the vaccine and you don't have a medical exemption, are you, would you qualify for EI? Yeah, so parking, of course, the medical exemption and the duty to accommodate in those circumstances, if the employer has a clear policy with clear consequences, um, non-compliance could, of course, lead to dismissal, which, if dismissed, typically you're not able to access EI benefits. So, um, as a matter of course, the, you know, there will be extenuating circumstances that will be looked at on a case-by-case -case benefit basis, sorry, but typically, no, you would not be able to access EI because basically you are not being, um, you're not complying with the condition of your employment. There's now a travel vaccine. I know the federal government's piggybacking on the back of the provinces and we've got that watermark and you can download it. Not all provinces are getting it done, but they've all agreed to get it done and I get that. Um, has the federal government done the work to make sure that that's accepted around the world in other countries so it's actually useful so people don't show up at borders and they say, what the hell is this? Absolutely. So first of all, this, this model of the standardized uh, proof of, of, credit, of vaccination was the best way forward for us as a government. Instead of building a new system and creating a database with everybody's vaccine information, um, the idea of piggybacking on existing systems made sense moving forward. And of course, as we've been doing this and building this and working with provinces, we have been working with international organizations to ensure that these, what are called kind of internationally proof of vaccine credentials or PVCs, um, really will be accepted uh, uh, internationally. This is the same thing we do for passports. Um, we, you know, we make sure they conform to international norms. Every prov uh, sorry, countries work together to ensure that they uh, that, that their other countries will accept our PVCs, and we are very confident that um, that they will accept it. And you know, we know that countries are accepting all different forms. And again, standardizing this means that when you see something from a Canadian, it will always look the same from every Canadian. Well, you're uh, the Minister of Employment now. On Tuesday, you might have a different job. Some people are speculating you'll be the Minister of Defense. Would you take that job? I would take any job the Prime Minister offers me. It's such an opportunity to be at that table and helping uh, guide our country forward, working with my colleagues, whatever whatever the Prime Minister sees fit. He, he's, I think he builds great teams, and I've been very lucky to be a part of them. Okay, well, maybe we'll see you here. On, well, you, well, we will see you here on Tuesday, I'm sure, <laughs> in Ottawa. Uh, Minister Carla Qualtra, thanks for coming. I appreciate it. Nice to talk to you, Evan. Take care.